On January 29, 1998, Eric Rudolph set off a dynamite bomb outside an abortion clinic in Birmingham, Alabama, killing one and maiming another. He watched the carnage that he had created, turned away calmly, and walked. He was dressed in a wig and a hat, and there was one medical student named Jermaine Hughes. That guy, <laughs> I will never forget, because what he did was so unique. Jermaine Hughes took one look at this guy and thought, this guy's not right. And he started to follow him. And he loses him. He finds a McDonald's and he calls 911. I'm at McDonald's right now. Was he white or black? Uh, he's a white guy. They're trying to ask him what kind of wig this guy was wearing. Oh, God, I don't know. You know, just get him. He's trying to blurt it out that it's a bomber he's following, and she is not hearing any of it. And then all of a sudden, out the window, he sees the same guy. It's the bomber, and he's walking right up the hill. Decides to get into his car and follow the suspect. Hughes runs into the suspect and his vehicle, and he writes down his license plate number. And it's quickly traced to Eric Robert Rudolph in Murphy, North Carolina. FBI and ATF agents are closely monitoring a witness to the Birmingham bombing who says he saw a man flee the area in a Nissan pickup truck shortly after the bomb went off. Not everybody can be Jermaine, but we wish there were more Jermaines. Eric Rudolph had no idea someone had seen his license plate and traced it to him. He was identified through his driver's license and his registration, and law enforcement decides to put his name and his photograph on the news. Agents say the truck's tags have been traced to a man identified as Eric Robert Rudolph of Marble, North Carolina. And late today, they issued a material witness warrant for Rudolph as agents searched the roads between Birmingham and North Carolina for any sign of the truck. This was an effort to get witnesses and leads, but it backfired. It didn't take long for law enforcement to find his trailer. Rudolph didn't think he could be identified. He had no idea someone had seen his license plate and traced it to him. But when it was all over the news, he heard it. Federal agents say they want to question 31-year-old Eric Rudolph. When he heard, he had to grab everything he could grab. He stocks up, buys more than 70 pounds of raisins, tuna, oatmeal, nuts. The FBI, everybody, you know, was swarming around there, surrounding this trailer. When they got in, though, they missed him. They found half-eaten oatmeal on the counter. He had been gone maybe minutes before they arrived. When they searched the trailer, they found weapons, money, some receipts. Also, they found that he had a storage shed. And when they searched that, they found the telltale metal sheet that tied him to all the bombings. The New York Times reports that steel plates used in the Olympic bombing match steel used in the Atlanta abortion clinic bombing, and that steel was determined to have come from a metalworking plant near Rudolph's North Carolina home. And the investigators say nails from the Alabama bomb are the exact type of nails found in Rudolph's storage shed and the same kind used in the Atlanta abortion clinic bombings. The search for Rudolph continues. He is believed to be hiding in a heavily wooded area of Western North Carolina. Federal authorities today officially charged Eric Rudolph with the bombing that killed one person and injured many more at the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. It was on. It was a manhunt, door to door, in through the woods, swarming with federal agents. The Nanahala forest is thick, dense, almost impenetrable. They are moving cautiously. In addition to an AR-15 rifle, Rudolph is believed to have approximately 25 sticks of dynamite still in his possession. He grew up in that forest, and he would spend every spare moment camping out, hiking, so he knew all the hiding places. He had the upper hand. If one thing 
I wish more than anything to accomplish by doing this is that you put Eric Rudolph's picture out there so that everyone will recognize his face as well as their own. There's no doubt that the person responsible for murdering my husband and for Emily's suffering, that he'll be brought to justice. I have to believe that. Splash all over the news as a person of interest. I wasn't shocked. It was like, you know, you, you stop and things come flooding back to you like all those things he used to say and all those things he used to do, um, his background and the way he was raised. Well, if you know what someone is, who someone is and what's important to them, it tells you a lot about what their motivations may be. We really need to understand domestic terrorists, who they are, why they act the way they do, what makes them killers. The overarching question of my behavioral analysis is always, what's the story here? Who is this person and what's their story? 